Hello, and welcome to Project IGI. Three stages. One, acquire transportation assets. Two, disable air defenses. Three, find Yosef Praboy and extract him for debriefing. Even... Even a grunt like me can follow it. I see. That's the best we have. I know. Mean, just how did you track Yosef down? We traced Yosef's call to his apartment, right? Local agents raided it and found photos of Yosef and his mobile number. So we call it and triangulated the coordinates. The mobile's located at a military airfield. That's where Yosef is. That's our primary target. Coming. Let's see where he's at. You must make your way through the goods yard to the truck. Avoid the cameras at all costs. If you alert the security, you'll have the entire base zeroing in on your position. Get to the truck. This is your objective on the mission. Reach it and steal it. I want this mission to be brief and above all quiet. Get to work, Jones. Hello once again and welcome to the action slash stealth extravaganza Project IGI. We begin the mission outside the train yard and we obviously have to get our way inside and steal some transport. First thing I like to do is to do a weapons check. For this first mission we've got ourselves a knife, Glock and an MP5, a silenced MP5. This will probably end up being the most used weapon, although we have to be careful with the ammo as it is in very short supply and there's very rarely a pickup for this particular gun. There will obviously be plenty of enemy weapons to pick up, but they are generally extremely noisy and just attract more hassle. At the top of the ladder, we find ourselves our first enemy on top of the water tower, and it gives us the opportunity to introduce one of our pieces of equipment, the digital binoculars. You're able to zoom in with them, so you can get a good look at any particular locations that you're going to be heading towards, and it also highlights any enemies that you can see clearly. This gives at least a, a rough overview of how many people are wandering around. Obviously anyone you can't see isn't highlighted, so it's not omnipresent. Usually working in tandem with this is the map computer. 
It lists all of the locations themselves, all the names to tell you what all the buildings are. That can be useful because uh, you'll see ones are marked barracks, but we'll want to be, for the most part, avoiding those like the plague. We'll see why later on. As well as that, you can see the little red triangles. Those are the enemies. Yep, you can just zoom in and see where every enemy is, at least those that aren't obscured by buildings. It's an extremely useful piece of kit. It's got a real-time map update, and uh, if you check out the view here, you can see that it lists all of the objectives that we have to go to, listed by the numbers. We can see where we have to go and what we have to do. Those are obviously updated in real time as we, as we finish the objectives and we get new ones. If you follow the cursor, we go through two gates and that seems to be the most optimal way to go, so let's get on with that. Looks like we found a way down. Ladders are very functional things. We... We've got our first weapon to pick up, which happens to be an Uzi submachine gun. They are awful and we will never use them. Right, let's kill someone. While the game itself doesn't have a tutorial, this first level does take you through the meat grinder in terms of the basics. Now we've had our first encounter with enemies. We can see that if they're not facing us, they don't see us or react. And the second guy in that room is automatically facing in our direction, so he will see us the second we step out. In that way, it teaches the player to remain as um, inconspicuous or unobserved as possible. That's an alarm button, and it's something you do not want to press. Let's see why. to the main objective itself. On the left we can see the first gate that we need to get through. Unfortunately, if we try to walk up to it, we find that it's locked. Um, we can just see the switch to open it on the other side, but there's nothing we can do about that. However, we can sort of poke the AI and make them come and open the gate for us. This takes a couple of shots at one of the guys in the distance. He'll run over and the gate will just open for him. Naturally, we want to do it the proper way. So, what's our next step? Uh, well, we're going to step back a little bit. <laughs> it's time to introduce the biggest enemy of the game, the cameras. If we zoom off over here, you can see the cameras are the little flashing green lights. Um, if they see us, well, well, we'll have a look at that in a moment. But we've got a room behind us here where we can actually switch them off for a couple of minutes. We can wander up to the console and it's one of those things where we just hold a button and wait until we're done. Even if we were crouching when we watched up to the computer, we would be standing up when we actually do the interaction. So you need to be careful around windows to make sure no one will wander past and see you. The map icon for the cameras is now missing the little red line, so indicating that the cameras are off. Now we can finally get underway. We're off to the water tower and we're going to take out that guy at the top. It's a long way to the top, so while we're doing that, I'd like you to cast your mind back to the intro movie, where Preboy is having a conversation with the Russian guards. Looking into the language resource files for the game, it seems that there were a number of different options for each of the three separate lines that came out in that particular portion of the intro movie. For some reason, all of them are included in the actual resource file, but as far as the audio goes, only one of each path was actually taken. Whether or not the others were recorded and just rejected for not being good enough is anyone's guess, but I wouldn't be surprised since it wasn't voice acted particularly well. Knife to the neck or the head is an instant kill. Our reward is everyone's favourite weapon, the Dragunov sniper rifle. We only have the ammo which is in the gun itself, usually 10 rounds, and there's never any ammo pickups for it, so we have to do as best as we can. Basically, the reason for this gun is to remove obstacles that are ahead of us. For example here, we're just going to take out some guys in the guard towers and most of the cameras. Once those things are out of the way, it makes planning the next steps a little bit more easy. Because I'm not entirely sure of the patterns of the guys wandering around over here, I'm going to avoid shooting them. We'll get them on the way through. So where to next? It seems that the preferred method is to take the zip line all the way down to the watchtower. We could go across the open courtyard on foot, but here's why we sh really shouldn't do that. The barks that I mentioned earlier have a surprise waiting for us inside. Do that. Also, if we try to just walk around them, sometimes this will happen. Fuck all that noise, let's just take the zipline. We 
away. Ta-da! Oh, and don't forget this guy. The key to playing this game is to be as, well, as, as quiet as possible. The problem is that it's really not built to actually handle that kind of stealth action. Action's probably the bigger word than stealth when it comes to this game. Having a look in here, we can find an AK, but no body. The bodies themselves disappear after a few seconds. If we look away and look back, they'll generally be gone. In fact, no one seems to really care about the bodies lying around anyway. It's only when things are actually in the middle of dying that people and cameras seem to actually take notice. Here we have a warehouse, something that's common to most levels. And here we've got some grenades we can pick up. We'll not actually use them, but they're there to pick up anyway. Grenades themselves seem to be of a very limited use. If you're going for a stealthy approach, they're really the last thing you want to be using anyway. But there are a number of circumstances where they actually come in very handy. This warehouse has nothing inside. I'll try to avoid these from now on. If you ever see a warehouse and I don't go inside, it's because there's nothing there. Back to the mission, we're still actually looking for a way to get around that gate. So looking at the map, we found we've got a camera and two guys there. Let's just take a wander over to the camera and see if we can find a solution that way. We haven't talked about cameras much, so let's take a look now and see how they actually function. Obviously, they have a limited line of sight. We can stand directly underneath them and really they won't be able to do anything. But if we step back and get within the cone of vision, we can hear the tone to start to pick up. If it gets to a steady tone, then the alarm goes off. What's also particularly nasty is if we run away and disable the alarm, when we come back, the camera can still pick us up again, so it's not a one-shot thing. However, the main problem with cameras is if you kill someone within their line of sight, they will set off the alarm instantly. However, sometimes this is a little bit spotty. Moving along, and at the top left we've got a little bit of a message from Anya. A bit of a problem is that in the middle of a mission, we don't actually have any sort of voiceover uh, conversations that go on between the main character and Anya herself. All the conversation happens through text boxes. These appear in the same place as the notifications for weapon pickups and stuff. So it can get a little bit confusing sometimes. And when you've trained yourself to ignore the notifications for when you pick up uh, weapons, sometimes you can accidentally miss some of the conversation that's going on back and forth. But um, I'll try to point them out and at least recap them. There were two ways over that fence. We could climb the fence directly. There's actually only one point in the entire game where you have to do that. Or you could have just climbed those boxes and got under the roof. Hooray! That's all of the enemies killed. Now we can move on and actually just leave the level, but before we do that we're gonna have a little look around first. Inside this pretty gigantic warehouse, tucked away right down in the back, is a machine gun called the Mini Me for some reason. Here you can see it firing. The decals all over the wall, and if we walk over here we can see that a lot of them pass through the wall and ended up just leaving holes there. We can go through this gateway or we can just double back and go through this house. This is the alternate way through though really I'm not sure how you're supposed to get to this point without having alerted and killed everyone else anyway so it's, it seems to be kind of pointless. Let's see just how pointless it is. Back at the fence, as I said before we can climb up these boxes and get onto the roof from the roof we can grab onto these. 
and then shimmy our way across. Very slowly. Very, very slowly. Uh oh. Someone heard us. Faster, Jones. Come on, Jones, go faster. Oh, there he is. Uh, where's he going? Oh shit. Oh, no, this one sees us too. <laughs> Fucking grenade! Anyway. Inside, though, is some ammo for, I think, the pistol. Problem. It says, picked up some ammo, but it doesn't tell you what the ammo was for. No, it's um, not particularly useful. We're at the other side, and you will tell us that we can just go and pick up the truck. So let's do that and uh, be on our way. So I will see you next time for the amazing adventures of Secret Spy David Llewellyn Jones in Project I'm Going In. Doesn't make any sense.